Hey, I'm Damon Garcia, and here on this channel, we give you perspectives from the Christian left, and we give you essentials for the future of faith. And in this video, I want to talk about a reason that is very rarely talked about for why so many people are leaving the church today. <laughs> So in my last video, I talked about why young people like me leave the church, and I talked about a very common pattern of when we look at the world, think of how Jesus would respond to this world, and then that question ends up leading people out of step with the community that originally taught them about Jesus. But there's this other reason that I couldn't articulate until after I left the church. And once I was able to articulate it for myself, it made me sure that I didn't want to go back to where I was before. And this reason is the realization that so much of the message and mission of so many modern churches is really just the message and mission of global capitalism disguised in a priestly robe. So let's talk about global capitalism, my friends. Now, most people have a constant, vague, anxious feeling about the way that the world is going and deep down feel that things are not as they should be, or at least even as they could be. And this is especially prevalent among the working class. People who have deep desires to spend their lives doing something meaningful and spending their lives with family and friends that provide deep meaning into their lives, but they must spend the majority of their lives selling their time and labor to someone else in order to be given a small check. And I say small because we all know it's a smaller amount of money than the amount of money you're actually making for the company, and you know the majority of that money goes up to someone that you don't even know. And then we use those small checks to stay alive on this planet as long as we can, savoring the tiny moments we get to actually have of a meaningful life outside of work. Now, I'm not against work. Most people aren't. I'm just against forced labor taking up the majority of our time and energy of our lives in order to have a life. Most people are. And today's younger generations are really feeling the brunt of this exploitative system, working jobs in order to survive and being barely able to even survive. And this realization leads them to the desire of at least changing the system and at most completely destroying and dismantling the system. And their attention is piqued when people talk about the possibility of giving back their time and energy in order for them to actually live meaningful lives. And they feel more and more sick of people who just tell them, stop complaining, think about how good you have it, just pull yourself up by your bootstraps straps and vote for all these tax cuts for the rich because the rich are the ones who actually create jobs and you just need a better job. That's all. You just need a better job. And this classic Republican message would be a lot easier to ignore if it wasn't for the giant power grab achieved through co-opting the entire evangelical movement in the 70s and 80s through the moral majority movement and convincing evangelicals that the only issues they need to care about is abortion, gay marriage, and religious freedom. Vote for everyone who is on the right side of these issues and vote against everyone who is on the wrong side of them and every Republican since has used these three issues to manipulate the evangelicals into voting for them. And then in demonizing the big and evil Democratic Party, they convince you that those are your only two choices, Republican or Democrat. But the majority of the Democratic Party still has this same message of just pull yourself up by your bootstraps and you just need a better job to waste your life at. And then just the radical few within the Democratic Party seem to only focus on issues of race and gender inequality the same way that the moral majority wanted you to only focus on abortion, gay marriage, and religious freedom. And both convince you that these fights against injustice is a never-ending battle and you're never doing enough for it, thus distracting you from focusing on issues of class and wealth inequality because both these issues are coming from rich Republicans and rich Democrats. 
And then when you start to think about all the people in life who are lying to you and trying to distract you from issues of class and wealth inequality, you end up thinking of your church. And if you grew up in the church, particularly the evangelical church, it's very likely that you grew up around a lot of Republicans. But this has nothing to do with the Bible. The marriage of evangelicalism and the Republican Party starts in the 70s. Before that, evangelicals were apolitical and didn't care about a lot of issues or were just diverse on all kinds of policies. Yes, that includes abortion. I'm so involved in the home and in the church, I don't have time for politics. And so just a few decades ago, the conservative political activist Paul Weyrich was trying to find a way to mobilize the growing evangelical movement into voting for Republicans. And he tried issue after issue after issue to get them to pay attention, failed each time until the government threatened to take away the Southern Christian private schools tax exempt status unless they actually allowed black people to attend their schools since racial segregation in schools was outlawed more than a decade before, but they're still getting away with it in their private schools. And boom, why Rick embraced this issue and convinced evangelical leaders like Jerry Falwell that the government is trying to take away your religious freedom, so vote for Republicans that won't allow this to happen. Thus, the birth of the religious right and the moral majority. But this only succeeded for a short time, and once again, Weyrich tried and failed with a few more issues to mobilize the evangelicals. They held a conference call to discuss the prospect of other political activities. Several people suggested possible issues, and finally, a voice on the end of one of the lines said, how about abortion? And he convinced evangelical leaders to start preaching against abortion years after the Roe v. Wade decision, during which evangelical leaders and evangelicals didn't really care about. The moral majority then used Ronald Reagan as their personal puppet. It's time for God's people to come out of the closets, out of the churches, and change America! And thus established the evangelicals as a powerful voting force in all the elections thereafter. And this propaganda continued brainwashing evangelicals ever since, using various bastardizations of scripture, a popular one being this idea that the rapture is gonna happen and the end of the world is gonna happen really, really soon, any day now, so don't care about all these social issues that the Democrats are fighting for. Anyway, a lot of people end up leaving the Republican Party when they realize that they've been using issues of conservative morality to distract you from wealth inequality. And a lot of people leave the Democratic Party when they realize their method of distraction is race and gender inequality, which are very, very real issues, but should never be used as a distraction when someone is trying to do something about class issues which has often happened on a political scale and even on Twitter, I've seen. And then as you become aware of all these methods of distraction, you realize the church's method of distraction, their way of explaining away this feeling of existential angst that things aren't right with the world and things should be different, is by telling this fantastical story about how you were born into a sinful world, fallen from God's original intentions because of the sins of the first humans, Adam and Eve. That's what you are feeling. You are feeling your separation from God. And in order to fix this, you need to become closer to God through your life a part of this church. Why you don't believe human beings are in a fallen state? They act so weird. And if you still feel this existential angst, you must do more and more and more like any other opiate used to distract you from life's problems. You were lied to by a lot of people, and some of those people were your pastors. But here's the thing, your pastors were also lied to. 
There's this thought experiment about how conformity works that requires you to imagine five monkeys in a room with a ladder and a banana on top of it. And whenever a monkey tries to climb up the ladder to get the banana, the four monkeys are soaked with cold water. And eventually, as this keeps happening, whenever a monkey tries to climb up the ladder, the other monkeys stop him, pull him off, or even beat him up. And this continues to happen whenever a monkey tries to climb the ladder until eventually someone replaces one of the monkeys with a new monkey and then when this new monkey tries to climb up the ladder, the other four attack it, bring it down, stop it from trying to go up the ladder, and then you keep replacing each monkey until eventually you have five new monkeys who have never been soaked with the cold water, who don't know why we stop people from trying to climb up the ladder. They just stop a monkey whenever the monkey tries to go up the ladder because that's just the new norm now. And I bring this up because I think in the 1970s, a small minority of very deceitful activists and pastors made this shift in ideology knowing it was BS. But then they trained more pastors and then those pastors trained more pastors and then those pastors trained more pastors until we end up to where we are at today with all these pastors spreading this ideology, convinced that Christians have always thought this way about certain policies and issues, completely unaware of the manipulation that has taken place. And this is true for several Republicans who think the only problem is morality, and several Democrats who think the only problem is identity. Several of the people spouting off these messages are just following the people who taught them. Which is why I don't think the church is evil, but I believe the message and mission of the church was co-opted by a few evil people during significant transitions in history. And realizing all this very much feels like being awake. And people just want to spend time with others who are actually awake. And unfortunately, we're at a point in time where people are leaving the church in order to wake up. Waking up to all the ways that we have been deceived by the prevailing messages of our current economic system and waking up to things that need to drastically change. And if you're watching this and you're a Christian and you're thinking, oh wait, no, hold on. What about all the Christian charities and missions organizations that do so much to feed people and help the poor and needy? Let me remind you of something that the great Christian Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. said. He said, a true revolution of values will soon cause us to question the fairness and justice of many of our past and present policies. On the one hand, we are called to play the Good Samaritan on life's roadside. But that will only be an initial act. One day, we must come to see that the whole Jericho Road must be transformed so that men and women will not be constantly beaten and robbed as they make their journey on life's highway. True compassion is more than flinging a coin to a beggar. It is not haphazard and superficial. It comes to see that an edifice which produces beggars needs restructuring, not just helping the beggars that it produces. Which also reminds me of another quote from Dom Helder Camera, who said, When I give food to the poor, they call me a saint. When I ask why the poor have no food, they call me a communist. Because there is this obvious line that the church doesn't want to cross. But if they cross it, they will finally be free and free from being one of the many institutions today that are aligned with the mission and message of global capitalism. So what is the reason that people are leaving church that is rarely talked about? What is this reason I'm talking about? The church has become one of the many institutions that serve the mission of global capitalism by distracting people from the problems of global capitalism and from wealth inequality. And like I said at the beginning, this is something that I couldn't articulate until after I left the church I was a part of and spent some time away from church. And then I realized, oh yeah, this was totally something that I was feeling. I just couldn't put it to words. But people are waking up and the Christian left is on the rise. 
I think of the Christian ministers in 2017 who went to go protest Trump's tax reform bill in the Senate reading from the catalog of 2,000 scriptures about serving the poor. I think of the rise and return of liberation theologians that I see online every day that I'm interacting with. People are waking up. So let me end this by reading you some words from the Apostle Paul that he wrote to the church in Ephesus. In Ephesians 5, he says, Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to mention what such people do secretly. And remember, he's talking about actual oppressive people in power here, not harmless kids who like having sex and smoking weed. So he says, for it is shameful even to mention what such people do secretly, but everything exposed by the light becomes visible for everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore, it says, sleeper awake, rise from the dead and Christ will shine upon you. Jesus Christ! That is my message for you all. Thank you for watching this video. Check out my other videos talking about very similar stuff and going to keep talking about it. So make sure you subscribe so we can keep talking about this. Hit me up in the comments. Hit me up on Instagram and Twitter so we can have a conversation about it too. Thanks for watching. See you later. See you in the next video. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.